The Giving Tree Once there was a tree, and she loved a little boy. And every day the boy would come, and he would gather her leaves, and make them into crowns, and play king of the forest. He would climb up her trunk, and swing from her branches, and eat apples. And they would play hide and go seek. And when he was tired, he would sleep in her shade. And the boy loved the tree very much, and the tree was happy. But time went by, and the boy grew older. The tree was often alone. Then one day, the boy came to the tree, and, sa- and the tree said, Come, boy, come and climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and eat apples and play in my shade and be happy. I'm too big to climb and play, said the boy. I want to buy things and have fun. I want some money. Can you give me some money? I'm sorry, said the tree, but I have no money. I have only leaves and apples. Take my apples, boy, and sell them in the city. Then you will have money and you will be happy. And so the boy climbed up the tree and gathered her apples and carried them away. And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time, and the tree was sad. Then one day the boy came back, and the tree shook with joy. She said, Come, boy, climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and be happy. I am too busy to climb trees, said the boy. I want a house to keep me warm, he said. I want a wife and I want children, and so I need a house. Can you give me a house? I have no house, said the tree. The forest is my house, but you may cut off my branches and build a house. Then you will be happy. So the boy cut off her branches and carried them away to build his house, and the tree was happy. The boy stayed away for a long time. When he came back, the tree was so happy he could hardly speak. Come, boy, she whispered. Come and play. I am too old and too sad to play, the boy said. I want a boat that will take me far away from here. Can you give me a boat? Cut down my trunk and make a boat, the tree said. Then you can sail away and be happy. And so the boy cut down her trunk and made a boat and sailed away. And the tree was happy, but not really. And after a long time, the boy came back again. I am sorry, boy, said the tree, but I have nothing left to give you. My apples are gone. My teeth are too weak for apples, said the boy. My branches are gone, said the tree. You cannot swing on them. I am too old to swing on branches, said the boy. My trunk is gone, said the tree. You cannot climb. I am too tired to climb, said the boy. I am sorry, sighed the tree. I wish that I could give you something, but I have nothing left. I am just an old stump. I am sorry. I don't need very much now, said the boy. Just a quiet place to sit and rest. I am very tired. Well, said the tree, straightening herself up as much as she could, Well, an old stump is good for sitting and resting. Come, boy, sit down and rest. And the boy did, and the tree was happy. The end. I saw a tree by the riverside One day as I walked along Straight as an arrow and pointing to the sky And growing tall and strong How do you grow so straight and tall? I said to my riverside tree This is the song that my tree friend sang to me. I've got roots growing down to the water. I've got leaves growing up to the sunshine. And the fruit I bear is a sign of the life in me. Life in me. I am shade from the hot summer sun. I am nest for the birds of the hair is of the hand becoming what the maker of trees has made me to be made me to be a 
strong young tree. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do not 
take advantage of widows or orphans. If you do afflict them, they will cry out to me, and be certain that I will hear their complaint. My anger will be like fire, like a sword that will kill you. Your spouses will become widows and widowers. Your children will become orphans. If you loan money to my people, to the poor who live beside you, do not act as a money lender to them, charging them interest. If you take your neighbor's cloak as collateral, you must return it before sunset. For it may be your neighbor's only warmth in the night. What else would your neighbor sleep in? If your neighbor appeals to me, I will hear, for I am the compassionate one. The Word of God. life we led 
when we were with you, which was for your sake. You, in turn, follow the example set by us and by Jesus, receiving the word despite great trials with the joy that comes from the Holy Spirit. In this way, you have become a model for all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The word of Christ has been resounding from you, and not only in Macedonia and Achaia, the news of your faith in God is celebrated everywhere, which makes it unnecessary for us to say anything more. They themselves report to us what kind of reception we had among you, how you turned from idols to God to be faithful witnesses of the living and true God and to await the appearance from heaven of Jesus, the only begotten whom God raised from the dead and who will deliver us from the wrath to come. The word of God. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Mafarisayo waliposikia kwamba Yesu alikuwa amewanyamazisha masadukayo Mafarisayo wakakusanyika pamoja Mmoja wao mtaalamu wa sheria akamuuliza swali ili kumjaribu akisema Mwalimu ni amri ipi katika Torati iliyo kuu kuliko zote Yesu akamjibu Mpende bwana Mungu wako kwa moyo wako wote na kwa roho yako yote na kwa akili zako zote hii ndiyo amri iliyo kuu tena ni ya kwanza. Nayo ya pili ni kama hiyo. Nayo ni hii. Mpende jirani yako kama nafsi yako. Amri hizi mbili ndizo msingi wa Torati na manabii. The good news of salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sister Linda, it's wonderful to have you with us to break open the word uh, for us on this uh, beautiful autumn weekend. Good day. I'm so happy to be with you here at All Saints. I've looked forward to this, and uh, with all our um, COVID challenges, we, I think, have done it. So, um, 
Happy day. The readings today clearly tie the love of God to the love of our neighbor. The first reading goes into detail about how we are to treat those on the margins of society, the alien or the foreigner, the widows and the orphans. These were, and still are, people who are most vulnerable, most likely to be forgotten, those whose needs are most overlooked. Exodus demands that the poor must be treated justly, not extorted or deprived of the little that they do have. The Holy One will hear their cries and retaliate to defend them. In the Gospel, Jesus quotes from the greatest prayer of Israel, the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is Lord alone. You must love the Lord with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your being. This prayer, which is prayed twice a day by our Jewish brothers and sisters, reminds the people that God is one, and the, the Holy One must be loved with their whole being. Jesus then makes a very powerful statement. He juxtaposes this prayer with the admonition from the book of Genesis, excuse me, Leviticus, chapter 19. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I think this wedding of the two commandments makes it very clear that our love of neighbor is as urgent as our love of God. Perhaps sometimes we forget how revolutionary this is. But we may ask, who is my neighbor? The great question of the lawyer who was looking to justify himself with Jesus? We know the answer. Jesus tells him the parable of the Good Samaritan. And this parable has a twofold whammy, if you will. We are challenged to see the least, the lowest, and the most helpless as our neighbor. And we are called to see people that we like the least like the Samaritan, as capable of great deeds of mercy and as being like God. Pope Francis challenges us with another whammy. I believe that in Laudato Si, we are confronted with the challenge to see all of creation as our neighbor in need. Pope Francis reflects on creation, the soil, the air, and water, and says, yes, these are being treated as aliens, as foreigners, and we have to open our eyes and hearts to relate differently to them, these sacred elements. We have forgotten that these elements of creation are as close to us as our own bodies, as the very stuff of our flesh and our blood. So we have used and abused these gifts. We have defiled the earth and polluted the air and the water. We are turning our planet into a pile of filth, as the Holy Father says in paragraph 21 of Laudato Si. Humans are also mistreating other species. Creatures are like orphans and widows. We drive them into extinction. Laudato Si reminds us that we have no right to destroy the creatures who share life with us in this community of creation. Pope Francis says, because of us, thousands of species will no longer give glory to God by their very existence, nor convey their message to us. We have no such right. As we look around, can we extend our awareness 
to see creation as neighbor? Can we honor the creator by being conscious that we are kin to creation, not dominant masters? Pope Francis encourages us to take our job as, as he says, tillers and keepers of earth very seriously. We are meant to be the very face of God for creation. But how are we living the call if we allow our consumerism to plunder our planet? Do we try to discover what our need for convenience is doing in ecosystems as we discard plastic waste? Do we know where our food comes from and how it is grown? How are the animals that give us eggs and cheese and milk and meat being treated? These are important questions because all these creatures are our neighbors in the web of life. Lodato Si reminds us of our mutual relationship with nature. This is not meant to be a guilt trip. Jesus was not guilting out the lawyer who posed the question, who is my neighbor? Jesus was trying to help him see differently and to understand more deeply. I think this is what Pope Francis does in Laudato Si. He shows us our poor, bleeding, and beaten earth. He says that we have the power and the grace to make changes. We have the strength of the sacraments and of our community. We have the love of our God to undergird our love of creation. We can be the good Samaritans for the planet. We can hear the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor and respond with compassion. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you, Sister Linda, for those powerful words. A year ago, uh, the children and youth of our All Saints Parish challenged the adults of our parish community, asking us to help caring for our common home for their future. They ask us to really roll up our sleeves and get involved. And so uh, we would like to share with especially the youth and uh, children of our parish uh, what the Caring for Our Common Home Task Force has done and coordinated uh, here at All Saints. Peter and Barbara are going to proclaim what we have done and try to do. In the last year, in response to your request, the caring of our common home task force have accomplished the following. Contacted local politicians as to their policies on regulating the use of fossil fuels. Included ideas in the bulletin as to how individuals might limit their use of fossil fuels, including suggestions for alternative transportation options. Arranged to have a local speaker address the team through Zoom, sponsored by Al Gore's Climate Reality Project on fossil fuel overuse and other issues. Purchase t-shirts from Save Lands, a company that plants 12 trees with every purchase. Earned a grant to support the city of Syracuse to implement their sustainability plan to plant 70,000 trees. Planting trees is the best way to reduce our carbon footprint left as a result of the overuse of fossil fuels. Plan to donate and plant two trees in the yard of one of our Congolese parishioners. 
purchased a bike rack right outside there. It's beautiful. That could be used by those living close enough to church to ride bikes rather than to drive to church. Encouraged our parish, parish council to both make financial investments with companies that work to limit the use of fossil fuels and to commit to solar energy. Influenced the diocesan team to meet with the bishop to investigate the possibility of utilizing the Catholic Energies program to help all parishes change to using alternative energies within the next 10 years. Included information in the bulletin as to how to make air travel less carbon intensive. Help the church groups here to not use plastic in serving food at their events. In included information in the bulletin as to, oh, excuse me, we already read that. Included information in the bulletin about individuals can reduce the use of plastics. Suggested the parish read The Time Is Now by Joan Chittister, a book which not only describes the urgency of our situation, but also encourages spiritual conversion and provides ideas to take, to take action now. Posted items and videos on our parish website and YouTube channel. Supported Julie Fishman in her efforts to create a children's garden containing native plants, which also helped to limit the use of fossil fuels. Designed and implemented parish masses and events to help parishioners with spiritual conversion and awareness of how both our situation and ideas for taking action made the proposal that All Saints Parish enroll in Community Solar. This was approved and contracted at the end of September. Well, I'd say that's quite a list. And so congratulations uh, to our task force and to our children and youth. Uh, we commit ourselves to continue joining with other people of goodwill in making Mother Earth a safer home for us all and especially for our children and grandchildren. Loving God, creator of the universe, you know every creature and its needs. With great trust, we offer our petitions in the name of all creation. Please respond, creator God, receive our prayer. Creator God, receive our prayer. That people of all faiths use the season of creation as a time to remember, respect, pray, and act for the good of all creation, we pray. Creator God, receive our prayer. That international organizations speak out strongly against the exploitation of the resources so generously offered by Mother Earth, and for the many brothers and sisters who live in need due to the waste and abuse on the part of others, we pray. Creator God, Receive our prayer. That all involved in government and every citizen grow in the awareness that any behavior that does not respect the environment damages human coexistence and undermines the foundations of peace and justice for all, we pray. Creator God, receive our prayer. For our Father Robert Yezo and all who, are, who have or are recovering from COVID-19, and for all who are ill, our Peter Herzog, Brian Deacon, Oscar Criolo, Jamie O'Donnell, Kathy Briggs' brother Kirk, Mariana McLean, Kelly O'Connor, Richard Navinger, Marsha Reynard, our Lord Hardy Chase's cousin Yvonne, and our Kathy Gosh's mother, Jean Moran, who has just been moved to hospice care. And for an end to the pandemic, we pray. Creator God, receive For all who have died, that they rest in the joy and peace of God's eternal embrace. At this Mass, holding up especially Irina Michaluk, Peter Finelli, Carrie Flack Abraham, and Justin Arnold, and all those who have died as a result of suicide, along with the family and friends affected by their deaths. 
we pray. For all in our community in any kind of need, for the intentions in our intention book and prayer chain, and for the intentions we each hold in our hearts, we pray. Our Peter Harding is usually here at Mass serving uh, during this COVID stretch, but uh, we pray for his wife Maria, who for healing and good health, uh, we pray to the Lord. Creator God, receive our prayer. Oh God, we bless you for having given us life to share with so many other creatures. Through them and with them, we praise you and ask that you continue to pour out your spirit upon the universe and in it to show forth your glory. And we ask this through Christ's star light. Amen. Amen. So, in gratitude and in joy, we embrace our calling and we lift our voices to proclaim as one the ancient song of praise.
God, you are holy indeed, the fountain, the source of all that is good. We pray that you send your spirit upon these simple gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the night before he died, gathered together with the disciples for a common meal. And while at table, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and shared it with the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. Towards the end of the meal, Jesus took a cup of wine. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, shared the cup with the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church scattered throughout our world. Make us grow in love together with Pope Francis, the Bishop of Rome, Douglas, our Bishop, and all who serve your people. Remember all of our sisters and brothers who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. And have mercy on us all, Make us worthy of eternal life with Mary and Joseph, St. Francis of Assisi, St. Clair, and all those who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, forever and ever. Jesus be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us share that peace with one another.
This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we to be called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that I should enter under your roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. In solidarity with our sisters and brothers who cannot receive communion as physically, we share this prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Again, thank you to Sister Linda for her uh, fine uh, message, and also um, on Sunday at um, after the nine o'clock mass, probably around ten o'clock, from ten to eleven, uh, Sister Linda will be in the lower level of the Bishop Harrison Center for a presentation and discussion: the attitudes of creation. So uh, all are welcome, with, and we'll certainly uh, have a safe distancing. And the, uh, the prayer flags here on our uh, uh, ambo are Tibetan prayer flags, and when we put them outside, uh, they will uh, the breeze will carry that that peace to heaven. But I also hope it carries that peace to anywhere where there's war in our world or in our hearts. Um, our Dave Kirby is looking for one or two volunteers to help out at the East Side Food Pantry, and it would just be two hours every third week from 12 to 2. Uh, so if you're at all interested, uh, David's contact information is in our bulletin. Uh, Christmas wreaths are now being ordered. Uh, all donations support our sister community in Villanueva. Also, there's uh, in our um, 
letter this week, the last couple of weeks, there's opportunities for tutoring um, children who are having difficulties in this COVID time uh, through Syracuse University. Uh, you might want to check that out. Also, one of our parishioners with some health issues is um, looking for a place to store her car during January and February. So if you have an empty garage, and uh, just contact the parish office. And again, uh, we're very uh, thankful for those who've been able to contribute to the Hope Appeal and for the ongoing generosity uh, to our parish during uh, this difficult time. It's certainly a real blessing. And once again, thank you to our Glenn Kine, our musicians, and for Ian and Barb, and our Eucharistic ministers, the whole crew here that keeps us going, and our uh, Bob, you do a wonderful job. I just enjoy taking a peek, and I say, well, it's better than better than it was in real life here. So uh, thank you for your, not only your commitment, but your amazing artistic abilities that is making, uh, making this uh, process meaningful to our parishioners. We're very, very thankful. Thankful to you. Amen. Oh, we have a special birthday. Uh, we do, but I'm trying to think who it is. <laughs> oh, Darius Williams. Oh, my goodness. Darius Williams is celebrating his 70th birthday. You never guess by looking at Darius Williams. Although 70 is young, everything's relative. So, and the uh, link for the uh, annual Father Michael Judge uh, lecture uh, featuring Father Jim Martin. Uh, is on our website, www.allsaintsyracuse.org. It's going to be an amazing evening. Folks are going to plug in from many different directions, and uh, there's a, another flyer in our uh, weekly mailing. So let us conclude our prayer. And as I pray our closing prayer, I would invite us also to, all of us, to um, pray a prayer of thanksgiving for our, our parish, care for our common home task force, who uh, are doing so much to keep us aware of uh, this critical issue in our, in our world. Loving God, you who established the dance of creation, who marveled at the lilies of the field, who transforms chaos to order, lead us to transform our lives, the church, and the world. And we ask this through Christ our light. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may our loving God watch over us and bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The liturgy is ended. Let us enjoy this autumn week in God's peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.